Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Trivia Night Online, brought to you by the People's Trivia Company. I am trivia host slash local celebrity slash consistently buffering Austin Floyd. Uh, we're here to deliver you six rounds of trivia enjoyment, that pub quiz live trivia experience, but online, on your computer. Round one is going to be general knowledge. General knowledge, no rhyme or reason to these eight questions. There's eight questions we toss together for your amusement. Good luck, everybody. I believe in all of you and love most of you. Here we go. Round one, general knowledge. What music producer has won two Record of the Year Grammys for Amy Winehouse's song Rehab and Bruno Mars's song Uptown Funk? Question one again. What music producer has won two Record of the Year Grammys for Amy Winehouse's song Rehab and Bruno Mars's song Uptown Funk? Question number one. Cassie, take it back. I just forgave you from last night. Question three. Two. Counting's hard. What one season TV show is largely credited with launching the acting careers of Linda Cardellini, Martin Starr, Busy Phillips, Jason Siegel, Seth Rogen, and James Franco? That cannot be right. Busy Phillips. That's right. Question number two again. What one season TV show is largely credited with launching the acting careers of Linda Cardellini, Martin Starr, Busy Phillips, Jason Siegel, Seth Rogen, and James Franco? Jack, if you wouldn't mind jumping back to your stream so I can see if it's closing down. And I also don't think that it airs on OBS's side. I think it's the YouTube. Okay. okay. So when it, it gave an error message, if it ever pops up again, that thing. That's what I want to know. Here's question number three. A chat without giving a hint is actually complimenting the answer to number two. I guess that the hint is it's a good show. I mean, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll let that slide. Busy is correct. I can't believe it. Number three, in the 2019 NBA draft, what Duke forward was selected by the New Orleans Pelicans with the first overall pick? Three again, in the 2019 NBA draft, what Duke forward was selected by the New Orleans Pelicans in the first overall pick? I don't, I don't uh, doubt that Busy Phillips is a, is a national treasure, as the chat is telling me right now. Uh, I just doubted that maybe autocorrect was running wild. <laughs> And maybe they had a different name and just, we decided to switch that over to Busy. That's fairly plausible in my head. Oh boy. Yeah, I've got nothing on my side. Let me know if we have an error, folks. But it looks like YouTube's having a little bit of a struggle. If we need to slow down, we will. But uh, bless your hearts for sticking with us. Number four. Eighth grade, mid-90s. Hereditary and Moonlight are all movies that were distributed and produced by what alphanumeric company? Four again, eighth grade, mid 90s, Hereditary and Moonlight are all movies that were distributed and produced by what alphanumeric company? Possible problems at YouTube. We seem to have a YouTube issue. Veronica, I'm not sure I have a typo in there. Um, Where? what do we do? What do we do? Let's just keep trying to play the game until... We're going to keep going. Yeah. We're going to push through it. We're going to push through it unless, like, I find a way to just, uh... <laughs> I can't even, I, yeah, I can't even figure out a way to move this over to Facebook and do both at the same time. <sighs> can't even figure that one out. All right. Number five. At least we've confirmed it's a YouTube issue. And yeah. for once, it's not my hardware. For once. Bless my heart. 
Francois Betancourt Myers, the richest woman in the world, got most of her money through her family's ownership of what French corporation? The largest cosmetics company in the world. I can't even restream it. I can't even restream it from YouTube to Facebook because the problem is within YouTube. YouTube. What's going to be a, a side effect is my view count's actually going to go up because you're all refreshing. <laughs> you're all refreshing nonstop. So that will have a, even though this is like, there's a, a good 60 of you playing tonight. Yeah, my playback, my view counts are already 500. This is, <laughs> that's a uh, bad side effect, but a side effect nonetheless. Francois Betancourt Myers, the richest woman in the world, got most of her money through her family's ownership of what French corporation? Largest cosmetics company in the world. I know, it's a weird bonus. I'm trying to look on the silver lining here, folks. At the silver lining? No, I'm looking right on it. Still not moving to Twitch, folks. <laughs> Still not moving to Twitch. Here's number six. Panthalassa is the most common name given to the prehistoric super ocean surrounding what Paleozoic supercontinent? Something to do. It's for sure. Yeah. YouTube. Uh, okay. We're uh, just going to tough it out, folks. They're working on it. Okay. The good people at YouTube will deliver us from this. Me being a YouTube partner, I'm, I must have the utmost faith. Panthalassa is the most common name given to the what given to the prehistoric super ocean surrounding what Paleozoic supercontinent? This is the first time I think YouTube's had the problem though. Like I said, usually it's us. It's either our electricity, our internet, our computer. Our block. Our block, yeah. Just... Here's number seven. At a twenty nineteen auction, a bidder paid one hundred and eighty three thousand dollars for a seven millimeter Lao. <laughs> Lei Fao Show revolver that is believed to have been used in the 1890 suicide of what artist? Lei Fao Show. That's good call. I think that's you got it. Good job, Austin. Right? Yeah. At a 2019 auction, a bidder paid $183,000 for a 7mm Lei Fao Show revolver that is believed to have been used in the 1890 suicide of what artist? You know, nothing to do with this question, though, but Alex Trebek, like, 9 a.m. every morning. Goes over every question he's going to read that day. And looks up the pronunciation. Just saying. He's good. <laughs> Finally, question number eight. What 1987 Newbery Honor winning novel by Gary Paulson tells the story of a 13-year-old Brian Robeson who has to survive alone in the wilderness after a plane crash? Our viewer count's going up for some reason, so that's, you know. Chat's letting us know YouTube is having trouble parsing the videos at different qualities. Probably a suspect with a cloud. Possibly Lower the quality. lowering the quality of bump, folks. Try that. Chat's saying that's a possible solution. We're willing to try anything. Yeah, I I have it at 360. I don't, it's not stopping for me very often, so. Make my face blurry. I love you guys. You guys are great. Not Thank only are you sticking with us. Yeah, not only are you guys sticking with us, you're uh, you're finding solutions, which I appreciate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this on screen for ten more seconds. Then we're gonna check in with Jack and the Heckle Cam. We're gonna read a couple of heckles that you kindly sent in. Very nice of you guys to send in heckles. People will argue that it's the uh, oh boy uh, that it's like I'm suspiciously doing this on purpose to get more heckles. Not the case. I'm not that smart. Uh, so. Jack, let's go ahead and read the heckles. Yeah. I think you're still alive. Yeah, we're good. Let's bring on the heckle cam in five seconds. I'll give you a little extra time here. Four, three, two, and one. Hello, heckle cam. Hello, everybody. Okay, thank you guys so much. They're what, good people. What, what challenges we face that improve our character, huh? How <laughs> about that? Uh, so this heckle comes from Misty. Hey, Misty. Misty says, happy hump day. Insert camel llama emoji here. They make those, right? No, they, I don't think they do. I don't think there's is a camel. There, there isn't a camel one? I thought no. for sure there was. 
No, but that'd be nice if you just typed an insert something emoji here and they just came up with it. Thank you so much, Misty. Have whatever emoji you want. Thanks for coming back. We will, we'll welcome you back. We uh, we enjoy it. And thanks for the support. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining us again. And thank you again so much for the support, especially, again, in these trying times. <laughs> uh, Charlie. She means the last 20 minutes. Yeah, I mean like she doesn't mean right now, not These this. literal trying times. Like this is right now is pretty trying for everyone. Uh, uh, buffering is a trial. Never, if you ever ask me, that's for sure. Uh, uh, we also have another heckle. I'm this sorry. one is from Charlie. Charlie. Charlie says, "Yo, shout out to 2020, the trash year where nothing, even YouTube internet connections, are getting out unscathed. Whew. Keep powering through the buffering with love from New Jersey." Charlie. Love love Jersey. Love Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. We're going to keep doing it. We're just going to keep muscling through. Uh, I, again, happy this time. It's not traceably our fault. Or mine, specifically. You know? Could it be the ads? I had turned up... You, I, I should not have ads running before this show is over. Johnny, I'm gonna, we'll talk about the ads later. But ideally, I should not have ads for my live crew. Yes. Uh, the, the, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, apparently. Did they turn on ads? That's going on. Okay, let's go over the answers. Let's move on. Sorry, folks. Sorry. We're just trying to... We're figuring this out live. We appreciate you being here. I'll stop saying that. Uh, round one answers. I could set up a Zoom. Uh, round one answers. I could set up a Zoom. Uh, round one answers. Number one. Guys, if this gets nightmaric, I'm going to set up a Zoom. Uh, what music producer has won two Record of the Year Grammys for Amy Winehouse's song Rehab and Bruno Mars' song Uptown Funk? The answer we're looking for... Mark Ronson is the right answer. Mark Ronson is the correct answer, number one. Number two. What one season TV show is largely credited with launching the acting careers of Linda Cardellini, Martin Starr, Busy Phillips... Love it. Jason Siegel, Seth Rogen, and James Franco. Freaks and Geeks, which chat loves. Chat's, chat's a big Freaks and Geeks fan, looks like. Is everyone getting political ads? This is, this is, what the heck? Oh, we're so sorry. We're so, I, I genuinely apologize for that. Literally, we did not, we don't want ads for our live crew. I don't, I, we, I don't want political ads. Well, we can't, I mean, we'll, we'll cash the check either way. Uh, in the 2019 NBA draft, what Duke forward selected by the New Orleans Pelicans with the first overall pick? Zion Williamson is the right answer to number three. Zion Williamson. Um, you shouldn't have to see any ads at all if you're watching live. I should have turned I turned those on afterwards. Number four. Eighth grade, mid-90s, Hereditary and Moonlight are all movies that were distributed and produced by what alphanumeric company? A24. A24 is the right answer to number four. Is eight for number four. Uh, <laughs> chat's just going over who they're voting for in, in chat. Okay, let's go over that. Uh, <laughs> number five. Francois Betancourt Myers, richest woman in the world, got her money, most of it, through her family's ownership of what French corporation? L'Oreal is the correct answer. L'Oreal is the correct answer to number five. Six. Panthalassa is the most common name given the, the prehistoric super ocean surrounding what Paleozoic supercontinent? Pangaea is the right answer. Pangaea is the correct answer. People tar tired of politics already in chat. Now debating pineapple on pizza. Seven. At a 2019 auction, a bidder paid $183,000 for a 7mm low Lei Thao Show revolver. That's believed to have been used in the 1890 suicide of what artist? Vincent Van Gogh is the correct answer. Number seven. Van Gogh for number seven. And finally, number eight. What 1987 Newbery Honor winning novel by Gary Paulson tells the story of 13-year-old Brian Robeson who has to survive alone in the wilderness after a plane crash? That is Hatchet. That's a tough question. Tough question, tough round, tougher first round. Uh, again, silver lining. Apparently, I'm going to get a couple cents from this because if ads are on, you guys get, just get getting bombarded with them. Uh, and I apologize for that. 14 times over. But how did you do in that round? Three out of eight. Oh, Fidel, say it ain't so. Holly with the seven. Chat, tell us your... <laughs> Chat is surprised number seven was not Kurt Cobain. I said 1890. Chris flexing the eight out of eight in the chat. Love it, love it, love it. Ooh, and chat's also we got a we got a, a we got a jackal in chat. Someone who's never who appears once to give their opinion. Hatchet's so good. Run right with my middle schoolers and love it every time. Thank you, S. Jim. Back to the reads with you. Movie quotes in round two. Movie quotes in this round. I will name a movie quote. 
I'll quote a movie. I'm going to quote a thing from a movie. Quoting a movie. You tell me, in this order, please, makes it easier for us to grade, the actor or actress saying the, who said the line, and in what movie did they say it? All right? I won't do any impersonations. That's going to be terrible. Uh, but name, in this order, the actor who says the line, and in what movie they say it. One point. You got to get both. You have to get both to get the point in this round. Missed all the answers because of lag? Serge, this is for you. One, Mark Ronson. Two, Freaks and Geeks. Three, Zion Williamson. Four, A24. Five, L'Oreal. Six, Pangea. Seven, Vincent Van Gogh. And eight was Hatchet. I love you all. That's for you for putting up with this nonsense tonight. Round two, movie quotes. Number one, I'm already pregnant, so what other shenanigans could I get myself into? Number one, again, I'm already pregnant, so what other shenanigans could I get myself into? Space. I'll take another one, please. Oh. I don't think... No. Oh, okay. No, no, no. But I do always appreciate Jack pantomiming the, uh, what she thinks her answer is off screen. Um, she's good. The, the pantomime was good. Just the trivia answer was wrong. Number yeah. two. Yeah. You're welcome, Serge. Oh, let me... Yes, bring another one. I'll take care of that one. Number two. I live my life... A quarter mile at a time. It just doesn't sound right coming out of me. I drive a Prius. Number two again, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. I like my Prius. Of course the trivia host rides a Prius. Number three. What is this? A center for ants? How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? We'll repeat answers, but we won't... Uh, yeah, actor, then movie, in that order, please. Happy to clarify that for chat. Again, number three, what is this? A center for ants? How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? Uh, by the way, uh, you, if you noticed in chat, if you're sharp, if you are got that sharp eye, uh, these are all 21st century movie quotes, by the way. All the movies were released in the year 2000 or later. Just to narrow it down for you. We're not going content for the last 20 years, you know? Chat is way nicer than they should be tonight. How do we get likes in tonight? You guys, you guys are great. Uh, number four. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I'll kill you. It's so hard not to do impersonation. Four again. Name the actor and the movie in that order. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And Disconnected. We're back, hopefully. I think we're back. Okay, we're back. I know, it doesn't sound right when it's so cheery. Because we, we came down, we're back up. Can I just kind of get a confirmation but chat that we're, we're, we're back? Can you see and hear me before we move on? Not a good sign. Ooh. Not the greatest sign. I'm going to wait for a chat to just confirm that we're back okay. before I move on. We're back. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, chat. We, you're, you're doing great work tonight, everybody. Uh, number five. Here's number five. I drink your milkshake. Drink it up. Oh, that is, that's a hint, actually. That's a good call. Thank you, Dr. Alfie. Da, da, da. Sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Oh. It, was a, it was more of a hint. But yeah, good point. Good call. 
Gonna make Dr. Alfie a moderator. One second. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number five, again, I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. I know you might not have seen any problems, but we, we went down on our side and came back up, so... There is something on the wing. No, I've got. I can't make movie quotes in this round. I can't. I can't even joke. Here's number six. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Six again. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? No, sorry, Doctor Alfred. If you if you point out mistakes, if you point that stuff out enough in chat, you're gonna get promoted to moderator. All right, you got to come to the office meetings. There's no pay. <laughs> but we're, we might put a wrench next to your name. It took Jack a year. Uh, uh, yeah, I... Wait, what? I'll take that wrench away. So. <laughs> uh, number six again. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Here's seven. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Thank you. Seven again, how many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? We do actually give pol uh, chat joking that if you become a moderator, you get a ladles of whiskey and a polo shirt. We actually do give shirts. Uh, we've, we've, we get, we've given shirts to our hosts. I'll try and do, I'll, try, I'll do terrible impersonations for the answers. You guys have been patient tonight, yeah. I'll do terrible impersonations of the ones I know. Here's number eight. Last one for the round. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. Eight again. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. It wants Mario to save it. If you ever make a joke and I find out about it. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a, a, a people's polo. I can't, uh, I can't find a good online embroiderer. Uh, we have a local embroiderer. So if you mail us a polo shirt, I'll have it embroidered for you. Free of charge, and I'll mail it back. If you want, you want our yeah. logo on your stuff? Mail it to us. P.O. Box 9091, Brea, California 92822. We'll, we'll embroider it. If you're regular, one one thing per mail, though. I'm not going to go nuts. All right, five seconds on the clock, then we're going to go over the uh, heckles, then we're going to go over the answers. Five seconds. Four. Three. Two. One. While Jack is... Yeah, nine, two, eight, two, two. Perfect. It's one more. It's so weird. It's so close. Thank you. Jack's going to put our... If you want to... Or just want to mail us something. The, uh, the, the hamsters you see right here on the heckle cam. Hello, Jack and the heckle cam. Hello, hamsters. Ah! Those are the hamsters that people have sent in uh, throughout the course of this show. So, you know, fun. <laughs> uh, let's go over the, over the heckles. What do we get, Jack? Uh, this heckle comes from Squirrel. Hey, Squirrel. Squirrel says, happy birthday, Bree. Oh. Thank you for suffering these two with me. <laughs> it's Bree's well, birthday? It's Bree's birthday. Happy birthday, Bree. Yay. Let's see chat go wild for Bree. Come they better. on, chat. They better. Well, happy birthday, Bree. That's great. That's a long time player here. That's a long time. They sent most of these ha hamsters. Yeah, they gave us these. Bree, why, why didn't you leave with it? Why didn't you change your name to It's My Birthday, Bree? Bree, happy mm -hmm. birthday. Happy birthday. We hope we, that this show is suitable. Tell us your team name tonight. I want to know so I can uh, <laughs> so I can vandalize mm -hmm. it on our on our score sheet. Thanks, Bree. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Moving on. Thank uh, you so much. But the happy birthday, Bree. Happy. He will be 50 feet tall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What and he will do my bidding. <laughs> and what, what is your first command? Fix the internet. <laughs> oh, uh, really nice. Just, you're a demon, and you said anything. <laughs> oh, we're back! Oh, okay, good! Oh, okay! <laughs> Hi! Hi, everybody! <laughs> Waiting okay. for the internet. I was just fantasizing Hi. about summoning a 50-foot demon... The and then making it fix the internet. Because <laughs> that's what I do with that power right now. Hi. Next heckle. 
Our next heckle We're is a going hefty it. heckle, quite a hefty heckle from John. John says, not going to heckle. Going to say thanks for another fun evening. That's your right, John. That's your right, John. Bless your heart. The the playbacks as relation to our current viewers is such a disparity. John, you are great for sticking this out. Love it, John. Thank you, John. We appreciate your good people. Next heckle. <laughs> Uh, our next heckle comes from Deanna. Deanna. Deanna says, Austin's hair is long enough, so when he is dressing up as Miles Edgeworth for trivia. Oh, no. Yes, I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm going to show chat who Miles Edgeworth is. All right. Uh, that heckle and my wife is referencing a video game called Phoenix Wright. So thank you so much. We're going to move on to the answers because we, we are so behind. <laughs> we are so behind. All right, thank you, Heckle Cam. <laughs> Goodbye, thank you. Bye. We're going to move on to the answers. I don't know whether to slow down because people keep refreshing or speed up because I've already taken up way too much time. So I'm going to do both. Round two, number one. I'm already pregnant, so what other shenanigans can I get myself into? That's Ellen Page and Juno is number one. Ellen Page in Juno. Number two, I live my life a quarter mile at a time. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Vin Diesel, the Fast and the Furious is number two. Number three. What's this? A center for ants? Oh. How can we be expected? To, what They're is going, going on? Down. No. I'm not slowing down for anything. I already did the impression. Vin Diesel, Fast and the Furious, number two. Three. What's this? A center for ants? How can we be expected to teach children to learn <clears throat> how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? Uh, ben Stiller and Zoolander. Four. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you, and I will kill you. Liam Neeson and Taken is the right answer to number four. Liam Neeson's, though. Them, Liam Neeson's, though. Number five, I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Not as good as my Neeson, but Daniel Day-Lewis and There Will Be Blood is the right answer. Daniel Day-Lewis, that DDL in There Will Be Blood. Six, what's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Rendo. Uh, we're looking at Javier Bardem and No Country for Old Men is the right answer for number six. Javier Bardem and No Country for Old Men. I'm doing my best here. You deserved it for being patient tonight. Seven. I don't. I can't do this. How many of you have ever, ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Tina Fey and Mean Girls. I can do that one as Liam Neeson, though. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? <laughs> number eight. Do you know what happens to a toe when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else is a line for some reason by Halle Berry in X-Men. They cut out they cut out a part of the movie that makes that line make sense. Uh, it hit the editing room floor, but they kept in that because they have to get rid of Toad, but inexplicable. <laughs> Brian Singer, get in here. All right, explain yourself. How'd you do in round number two? It's round two. Oh boy, it's round two. Let's move on right on to round three. While you're posting your scores in round two for round two in chat, while you're bragging about what you did, we will explain round three. Round three is fictional fish. Fictional fish. Did you see the extended cut, Charlie? Charlie and Chet saw the extended cut. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong. Uh, round three, identify the animated fish. That's all you got to do. All you got to do. Picture round tonight is identify the fictional fish. How are we getting likes, and how is our viewer count going up? You guys are the You're salt the of the best. earth. We have the best community on the internet. Uh, round three, number one. Identify the animated <laughs> fish. Name the fish, not the movie. Oh, dang. Name the fish, not the movie, not the TV show, not the video game, not the whatever. Name the fish. You want the actor? No, not the actor. All you want is the actor. <laughs> It's Liam Neeson. If you give me those fish flakes now, that'll be the end of it. But if you don't. Uh, number one, identify the animated fish. Name them. They're all fictional. None of these fish exist. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we just need the first name. You know? If they did, you had some weird drugs. Number two. Hey, right? I could do that one. Yeah, I know that make you happy. Number two, identify the animated fish. Yes, that's a fish. I promise. Is definitely. I mean, you know. Yeah. It. 
if if you're upset about this, not you specifically, mm. but if if the internet might be upset about this, maybe not qualifying as a fish, you're gonna be real upset coming up soon. <laughs> Have I seen Liam Neeson on Life's Too Short? Is that the Warwick Davis uh, show? Because I've seen him on Extras, and that he's great. Or some some sort of... Oh, in Extras, he's amazing. <laughs> I want to do improv. Everyone you, is. You have cancer. You're dying. <laughs> Number three. Liam Neeson's funny. Identify the animated fish. That's the scene? Oh, is it Life's Too Short? Okay, I, okay, then I have seen it. I have seen it. We're That gets passed around the improv oh. community pretty quickly. Like, once you, once a famous person mentions improv on a TV show or anything like that, all, like, the Facebook groups start sharing the clip. Like, look, we exist! It's in BoJack Horseman, too. <laughs> yeah, BoJack makes a pretty good dig. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Who else got us? Community gets us a lot. Mm. Identify the animated fish. Although that movie was okay. It had um, Sleepwalk with Mike Birbiglia's movie about improv was, again. Uh, don't, that, that was don't, our, what was it? Don't Think. Don't, don't Think, think yeah. Twice. That, that, was our, uh, that was our Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> don't Think Twice was the inter- improv community's Top Gun. All right, that was ours. <laughs> One for us. Number four. Yeah, this round's tough. I know that. Uh, t- tomorrow might be tough, too. It's a tough week. It's not going to be a tough week. And then next week it gets hard. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what I think Jack is referencing is next Tuesday is going to be Trivia After Dark. It's a more, not like it's R-rated trivia. That was great. Uh, it's R-rated trivia. It's not. We're going to just have more, you know, put the kids to bed. Uh, we're gonna try it out. It's gonna be fun. Number five. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So this one's a whale. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's Hear me out. Not a fish. Hear me out. This one's a whale. I know this. You obviously know this. We've crossed out fish. That was easier than replacing the question. <laughs> For this one, identify the whale. <laughs> We have we have seven questions of identify the fish. Yeah, chat pointing out. Yeah, yeah. Chat pointing out. This is the wolfin from last night's hybrid abomination round. He just he just been feeding. <laughs> and for this one, identify the whale. Way easier. Uh, we're going to be doing a what's in the box challenge. Can you find something to put in the box? Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have a halftime round for this nonsense. Um, there's a couple things on the couch. I don't know. Here's number six. A little easier. This one's a fish. This one I can confirm is fish. Identify the fish. I want to. I want to quote some of these uh, media sources as Liam Neeson because it's kind of like a George Takai impression. You can't once somebody does it or yawn or yawns, you know, you have to do it yourself. If you just hear somebody like impersonate George Takai, oh my, you have to do it. Four of you did it at home just now. Oh my, everyone wants to know if they have one. So you know, I just started a big chain reaction just now. You have no idea. Here's number seven. This might be the toughest question I have in tonight's quiz. This one. Yes, this is something that exists. Yes, this is named. Yes, it, I think, made money. Number seven again. I identify the animated fish. By the way, next week we uh, we might have a green screen. Which I'm excited about. You know? Here's the last one. Number eight. Last one. Identify the fish. Love it. Love it. Identify the fish. 
that's fine. A little easier at the end there. A little easier at the end. All right, we're going to keep this on screen for about 10 seconds. 10 seconds on the clock, and then we are going to move on to the heckles and then the answers. Ta-da! Yes, some, I don't know what's going on. Not, I have a separate problem, I think, which is shitty. But. All right. Get a lot of playbacks, though, because everything's refreshing. Hooray. Oh, boy. Sorry, everybody. All right. This is on the clock for five more seconds. Four, three, two, and one. Let's check in with Jack and the Heckle Cam before we go on to the answers to round <laughs> Chiron. Number three. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Hello, hecklers and all the people playing. Uh, I have this heckle that comes from Mike. Mike says, when we are in person, can you lag and buffer in real life just to remind us of these good times? Yeah, 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 yeah. During our live shows, when we tour, we will tour the country. We will once this is over and it's safe to do so. We will tour the country and make stops in the cities where we think you guys will can can check us out. But live shows, I will just stop in the middle of a question and just sit down and just drink a beer to uh, facilitate the buffering experience you're used to. Oh boy, oh boy. Thank you so much, Mike. We appreciate the heckle. You guys were very nice tonight. I can't believe we're getting these many heckles. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. Jack, we're gonna say goodbye to you, and we're gonna move on to the answers to round number three. Bye. Bye. I can't even bring up the team names tonight. I gotta do that. Hold on a second. Let me get the team names updated. I don't have the team list updated. Uh, answers to round number three. Number one, identify the animated fish. Oscar. I know where he's from. I know where Oscar's Shark from. Tails. Woo! That's what I want to say. I don't know if I'm right. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, from Shark Tail. Oscar from Shark Tail. Number one. Didn't even know where they're from. Just needed to know the name of the fish. Number one is Oscar. Number two. Ponyo. Ponyo is the right answer. Ponyo is number two. That's Ponyo. Number three. Uh, that is from Ponyo. <laughs> three. Uh, Mr. Henry Limpet. Mr. Limpet from the incredible Mr. Limpet. It's a generational coverage needed there. Wow. Need that generational coverage. John Ian chat saying that Oscar is in Shark, Shark Tale is voiced by Gil Smith. You can go <laughs> ahead and put yourself on timeout there, bud. <laughs> Gil Smith. Here's number four. Uh... I know this one. Mrs. Mrs. Puff. Puff. This is Mrs. Puff from the SpongeBob, uh, SpongeBob universe, uh, number four. Number five, I didn't find an animated whale. Uh, Monstro from Pinocchio. That's Monstro from Pinocchio. Number six is Flounder. You thought it was the Incredible Mr. Limpid? <laughs> the Incredible Mr. Lymph Node. <laughs> ah, seven. Identify the animated fish from the hit The Reef, a.k.a. Sharkbait, Pi or Pisces is the right answer to number seven. That's a tough one. It's a real tough one. Finally, number eight. Uh, that's Dory. Looking at Dory from all M uh, all of those Nemo things. That's Dory. You didn't get Dory. You don't know fish. I'm just going to say this right now. You don't know what a fish is. You don't know pop culture fish. Uh, no fish. Uh, let's get this team list updated here. Chat working so hard tonight. So, so, such long team names tonight. There we go. All right, while you're posting your answers to round number three in chat, tell me your scores in round number three. Let's go over the halftime rules. In this round, you're going to be texting a guest at 657-234-2399. <laughs> chat is telling Jack that Pi is exactly three. She's taking notes, and she doesn't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Jack, what were you thinking for a hint for the... We're doing a what's in the box challenge. So you have about a couple minutes. You have a couple minutes to send a guess. Uh, 7.58 is the cutoff. 7.58. Uh, 657-234-2399. What were you thinking for a hint? Do you have an idea? Uh, uh, we're looking... Okay, we're looking for a vehicle from a movie. Yeah. There we go. We're looking for a vehicle from a movie. Text your guess at 657-234-2399. Uh, we are going to be looking for your answers. One guess per phone number. Here's the box. That comes in. In this box is a vehicle from a movie. 
I don't want to shake it. I might want to eat it later. <laughs> or it might uh, break here, or claw out or you whatever. Know, who knows? Uh, you have a couple minutes. you got two minutes to go over and send in your answers. Send them in. Uh, again, 657-234-2399. Uh, I'm going to take a very small break. Jack is going to tell you about, uh, let's see, Tuesday's game. What are you sure. talking about? Tuesday's game, uh, if you've noticed, this episode you're watching is episode number 67. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday's episode is going to be episode number 68. And Tuesday, our next episode after that is episode 69. And it's going to be adult themed rated r trivia um it's probably not gonna be that bad i don't know i don't think so we'll see you it's exciting and naughty and we're all adults here so that's fine um but you know what's exceptionally naughty is thinking that pi equals three that's ups upsetting it doesn't it doesn't um yes trivia after dark uh, as our trivia usually is. Heck, we have some very dedicated fans joining us in New Jersey, so they're always playing late. Um, uh, we're excited for that game, where all our theme games are usually pretty good. I don't, I don't think we'll be asking yeah. for pictures for no, this no pictures one. for that one. Thank you. Jack. <laughs> uh, also, by the way, we've got new merch. Merch.peoplestrivia.co. Uh, we got new merch. We have a new shirt with a logo. We're fine. Uh, we got a new shirt with our logo. We got a hoodie. Uh, we have uh, a dog or pet hoodie, and then we also have a uh, a face mask, which actually looks kind of cool with our logo. Actually, the face mask, not gonna lie, kind of looks cool with our logo. So check it out, Jack or merch.peoplestrivia.co. Sure. Jack, Jack might have oversold trivia after dark. It's <laughs> we're gonna say the word like penis like twice, and we're, that's what that's it. That's what we call it. That's it. That's it. I'm gonna swear. And because we're juvenile as heck, it's like, what? what's the reason? Ads ah, episode 69. Mm -hmm. And we're all children at heart. Uh, all right. You got under a minute. Try your uh, VPN. 10 seconds to send in the guest. 10 seconds. Um, and this is gone, gone. Actually, my mom was having problems with it too. Oh, yeah. balls. Looks like, our, never mind. Don't go to our store. It's terrible right now. Uh, let's see what we have for answers. And by the way, it's the first person to send in the correct answer. Without looking at these, we need the first person to send in the correct answer. Oh, who do we have tonight? Who do we have? These are numbers from last night. Looking over. Jack, do you see a winner? If we don't have a winner, we will go from uh, go from uh, something that's close in the neighborhood. That's a that's there it is. Uh, yeah. That's it. That's 0648. It. If your phone number ends in 0648, hi, what's your email? You won. There we go. 0648, you won. Congratulations. You guessed correctly and you guessed first. First person sending the right answer. I love the answer. I love the guess con air. I love someone has con air. Mm, is the, is, is the answer. Let's show them. Let's show them what it is. We're looking at here. Uh, looking for a vehicle from a movie. They even got specific with it. We're looking at an X-Wing here, folks. We're looking at an X-Wing. I got an X-Wing, you know. Uh, of course it's Lego, because I'm a huge Lego nerd, but it's, you know. That was the What's in the Box Challenge. We're looking at an X-Wing. Congratulations, you won yourself a Target gift card. Nice. Use it on whatever you want. Use it on things. Oh, they just fired the rocket. In the box, the laser just went off. Oh, oh well. Congratulations. Johnny won that one. Nice job, Johnny. Congratulations. Yay. Smart. You didn't have to guess Lego, but he did. He did know it was Lego because he knows I'm a huge nerd. All right, moving right on. Moving right along to round number four. In this round, it is a little different. In this round, we're looking for a famous uh, thing. Not a person tonight. I'll give you four clues as to what we're looking for. The sooner you send in a correct guess, the more points you get. You get it right on the first clue, you get four points. Then it's three, then it's two, then it's one point. And then if a wrong answer is sent in at any point in time during that round by your team, you get zero and cannot guess again. You get one shot, got to make it count. Usually it's a person. Usually it's a person. Not tonight. Not tonight. You'll know You'll know pretty soon what it is. I think that you guys think that ne this Tuesday is going to be very, like, dirty. It's not. I don't think it's going to be dirty. It's just art. 
Uh, now I, now I know what you guys want. We might write that, Matt. We want, might, we might write that after this. All right, here's your first clue. You get two minutes in between. Uh, your first cutoff is 8.03. 8.03 is going to be your first cutoff for this clue for four points. This book has often been ranked as one of the best English language novels of the 20th century. It was the first novel ever written by its author, and it sold fewer than 3,000 copies before going out of print. After that, it went on to become a bestseller and is adapted into a film three times, twice in English and once in Filipino. It was written partially as a counterpoint to R.M. Ballantyne's novel, The Coral Island. Some guy, you know why I'm going to, you know, why'd you only put one team, huh? Some guy in chat. Four points again. This book often has often been ranked as one of the best English language novels of the 20th century. It was the first novel ever written by its author and it sold fewer than 3,000 copies before going out of print. After that, it went on to become a bestseller and has been adapted into film three times, twice in English and once in Filipino. It was written partially as a counterpoint to R.M. Ballantyne's novel, The Coral Island. All right, you got until 8.03. 8.03 is the cutoff on this one. Sorry. Thank you. Well, now you're just bragging. You have yourselves a minute left. One minute left. Oh, yeah, actually. What's up? I think so. All right, saying whether the work is good or not, I guess is I've accepted that. But try not to give hints. Because you're just, you know. Doesn't happen on Jeopardy, folks. You don't hear the crowd just like whispering. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. All right, 15 seconds remaining. 15 seconds. Are we still having to refresh every five sec? Uh, every like. All right, here is your next clue. 805 is your next cutoff. Three points. It was This book was written in 1954 and takes place in the middle of an unspecified war. Some of this book's lesser characters are Roger, Percival, and a set of twins, Sam and Eric. This book was originally titled Strangers from Within, but was renamed to a literal translation of the name Beelzebub from the second book of Kings in the Bible. Three again. This book was written in 1954 and takes place in the middle of an unspecified war. Some of this book's lesser characters are Roger, Percival, and a set of twins, Sam and Eric. This book was originally titled Strangers from Within, but was renamed to a literal translation of the name Beelzebub from the second book of Kings in the Bible. 805 is a cutoff for this one. You've got about a minute and 15 seconds. We'll call it a minute. <laughs> the playbacks on this video tonight are th through the roof. <laughs> because you poor souls have been refreshing. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Under a minute left. Chat. Chat doesn't like this. Chat does not like this subject. No one's come to defend this work yet. Yet. But this one's getting lambasted in the in the notes. All right, you have yourself 10 seconds until the next clue. 10 seconds till 8.05. All right, here we go. Next clue for two points. Written by William Golding and commonly read in middle and high schools, this British book begins with a plane crash. This book has been adapted to a radio dramatization by the BBC and has been adapted into a play by Nigel Williams. Some of the most important objects in this book include a conch shell and a pair of glasses. 
Two point clue again, 807's The Cutoff, written by William Golding and commonly read in middle and high schools. This British book begins with a plane crash. This book has been adapted to a radio dramatization by the BBC and has been adapted into a play by Nigel Williams. Some of the most important objects in this book include a conch shell and a pair of glasses. 807 is a cutoff. I have a cl clock right there, so you know you're, <laughs> you know you are uh, live and in sync with me. Bless your heart, side folks. By the way, chat thinks the after dark trivia is going to be very, very dirty. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> oh, did I did I push that? No, too hard? just their imaginations ran wild. Sorry, did I push that too? hard? Okay, I'm sorry. Moving on. <laughs> 807's the cutoff. 807's got 45 seconds on the clock. Yeah. Terrifying. 30 seconds on the clock before the final clue. Try a Wi Fi instead of a hard. You have under a minute left on this clue. Under a minute. Ten seconds, actually. That's, that's well under a minute. <laughs> Five seconds for this clue, and the last clue's coming. 809's the final cutoff for the final clue for one point. Last clue. This book's plot involves a group of choir boys stranded on a re remote island. Unsupervised and alone, the group, including Ralph, Simon, and Piggy, quickly devolve into savage behavior, even killing each other occasionally. This book's four-word title refers to a character in the story that is made out of a rotten pig's head on a stick. One point clue again, 809 is the cutoff. This book's plot involves a group of choir boys stranded on a remote island. Unsupervised and alone, the group, including Ralph, Simon, and Piggy, quickly dissolve, devolve into savage behavior, even killing each other occasionally. This book's four-word title refers to a character in the story that is made out of a rotten pig's head on a stick. One point clue. You know, in times like this, I'm, I'm just glad I have a refreshing Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. <laughs> literally the opposite of an advertisement. I literally pay, paid them to drink it. That's how much I like it. That's how much I'm willing to shill out, you know? It's a cheap trick. It's a cheap trick, and I feel ashamed. All right, under a minute left. 30 seconds on the clock. 30 seconds. After this, we're going to go over the heckle. Oh, no, no. Actually, sorry. After this, we go over the answer. Then we go over four questions and the heckle. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Jump the gun. Ten seconds, folks. Ten seconds. All right. That is time. And here is the answer. Round four. The answer we're looking for. Lord of the Flies is the correct answer. Lord of the Flies is the correct answer. Round four. The second half of this round. Was that? Oh, there's a character in there that you didn't name. Uh, named Jack. Oh! He's the bad guy. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I thought the boat was the... No, the plane was probably the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> the boat. Uh, Lord of the Flies, the answer. Round 4.5 are going to be four questions loosely related to these clues that I just gave you. Not necessarily directly related to Lord of the Flies, but they have something to do with the text that you just saw on the screen. Here is the first question in round 4.5. Good luck. Number one, born, or sorry, both Lord of the Flies and the Coral Island can be described as a member of a survivalist fiction subgenre named after what 1719 novel by Daniel Defoe? I need the novel here. One again, both Lord of the Flies and the Coral Island can be described as a member of a survivalist fiction subgenre named after what 1719 novel by Daniel Defoe? Name the novel. Don't, don't name the subgenre. Question number two. The first biblical book of Kings begins with the death of what giant-slaying monarch? 
to again. The first biblical book of Kings begins with the death of what giant slaying monarch? I do like the chat went nuts with the uh, the Lord of the Flies spinoff of Simpsons quotes. <laughs> it's expected, and we appreciate it. Question number three. William Golding won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1983, just one year after what author of 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera? Oops. Number three again, William Golding won the pro uh, Nobel Prize in Literature in 1983, just one year after what author of 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera? All right. Final question for the round. Like other mollusks, conches can sometimes produce pinkish, non-nacreous forms of what gemstone? Nacreous? Nacreous. Number four again. Like other mollusks, conches can sometimes produce pinkish, non-nacreous forms of what gemstone? It's my best shot. You get my best attempt. Hit me with your best shot. Dun, 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 dun. Fire away. Speaking of firing away, you fired away with some heckles. Thank you so much. You guys are very nice to get those sent in. Um, I'm always surprised when that happens during a show that's not going well. Uh, on a technical side. This is, I'm doing perfect. Jack's doing great. Also perfect. I don't know why I did, I don't know why I stepped down there. Uh, we're, we're all doing perfect here. It's YouTube. That ha I have notes. I have notes, YouTube. All right, let's go to Jack and the Heckle Cam to review what you've sent in in between the rounds. Hello, Jack and the Heckle Cam. Hi there, Hi. everybody. Uh, this heckle comes from Bree, the birthday girl. Bree! Uh, <laughs> Bree says, I'd never dream of telling you what to do, but just so you know, my birthday wish is that Jack sings happy birthday, Mr. President, like Marilyn Monroe, just saying. Well... You didn't say we have to do it on stream, so get ready to have a personal email sent to you. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Or How much did she send? Oh, yep, it. it's a hefty heckle. Damn it. Can... Happy birthday to you. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Happy... How was it? Okay, that's it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> that's a... N n we're going to get a copyright strike from, from Marilyn Monroe's estate. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's why. That's why. <laughs> Nailed it. Thank you so Bree. much, Bree. Bree, stop Happy making birthday. us sing. We don't. You know, people don't like it when I sing. People demand it. People demand it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bree. <laughs> Thank you. Next heckle. Uh, our next heckle <laughs> is a devilish heckle, and it comes from Sergio. Sergio says, "Here's some money so that I can demand my money back." <laughs> Lag emoji, glitch emoji, <laughs> interweb emoji, flaming poop emoji, dumpster fire emoji. That's a bold strategy. Winking emoji. I like that. Sending us money so you can demand it back when it's not satisfactory to your needs. Uh, that's a great tactic. Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. I love it. Thank you, Sergio. We appreciate you, bud. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, and then this next heckle comes from Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie just wants to say, remember to vote. Yeah, vote. Please vote. Vote. Just vote, right? Vote. Right? Vote. Vote. Please. I don't even, I genuinely don't, don't care what you vote for. Just, just go vote. Just go vote. Try it out. It's fun. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. We I, I do care what you vote for, but I'm not. Right. But I, I, I also know uh, she does. I, I, I'm not going to change your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say goodbye to the heckle cam. Let's, goodbye. Goodbye. And let's go over the answers around 4.5 while we move on. 4.5. Number one. Both Lord of the Flies and the Coral Island can be described as a member of survival's fiction subgenre named after what 1719 novel by Daniel Defoe? Robinson Caruso is the right answer. <laughs> Robinson Caruso is the correct answer to number one. Uh, the subgenre is called Robinsonade, which is just the worst drink ever. Just the worst. You know? Uh, number two. Oh, someone in chat's really tired of the ads I keep playing. <laughs> Uh, the first biblical book of Kings begins with the death of what giant slaying monarch? We're looking for King David. 
King David. Chat asking if we'd ask for a nickname. What nickname is there for King David? I don't know of. Put it in the end of the game. At the end of the game, we can allow challenges, notes. Also, got any notes for tonight's show? End of the game. Tell your scribe. That's where they put him. King Dave? King Dave? Do they call him Dave in the Bible? Was he ever referenced as Dave in the Bible? Did Dave slay Goliath? Like, if that's true, we'll look into it. Uh, <laughs> but, like, I don't think the word Dave appears in the Bible at all. Uh, William Golding. <laughs> that's Dave and Chuck from the Bible. Uh, William Golding won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1983, just one year after what author of 100 Years of Solitude and Love in the Time of Cholera? Gabriel Garcia Marquez. That's a tough one. That's a tough one, too. We got a couple tough questions in tonight's game. Like, four. Really tough ones. Five. <laughs> uh, like other mollusks, conches can sometimes produce pinkish, non-nacreous forms of what gemstone? Pearl is the correct answer. Pearl is the correct answer there. Good old Danny and Golly. You know, you, heard, you guys heard Danny Slade Golly? You hear that? D D Danny? Davy? Yeah. Yeah. An, an, an old old Ponchy Pilo uh, kind of just really Ooh. screwed up old Big J. <laughs> Judy? Judy turned on Jay. Did you hear about that? Judy for like some silver. Moving on. Uh, Pearl's the answer number four. Five is find the theme. Tell me how you did in round number four. Tell me how you did. We're making it Bible nicknames tonight. Bible nicknames. Dave. In this round, find the theme. We got eight questions. The correct answers is one through seven. Have something in common. Uh, tonight, it's kind of tough, but not. You know? It's kind of tough, but not. Good luck. I love you all. Believe in all of you. Love most of you, actually. I, I'm going to completely correct that immediately. Number one. What kind of 1980s nylon fad trousers? were largely made popular by the company Bugle Boy and rose around the culture of breakdancing. Tonight's episode, Book of Dave. Number one again, what kind of 1980s nylon fad trousers were largely made popular by the company Bugle Boy and rose around the culture of breakdancing? That's question number one. Number two. Released by the Emily Post Institute, the 19th edition of what book contains tips for how to share an Airbnb with roommates, how to politely text, and when to unfriend someone on Facebook? It is the, this is the, um, the better way to put this, it's the book of, hmm, you know, or the book on, hmm. Number two again, released by the Emily Post Institute, the 19th edition of what book contains tips for how to share an Airbnb with roommates, how to politely text, and when to unfriend someone on Facebook. Now, I'm looking for the answer here. If you know the answer, put the answer and you'll get the answer right. <laughs> you know? Unlike most questions where... Unlike most times where someone will get like guess, where someone will guess and then my answer will be tangentially like related or maybe they'll find a loophole in the question don't do that <laughs> just be wrong it's okay other questions are happening number three what 1994 song by the beastie boys begins with the line i can't stand it i know you planned it i must set it straight this Watergate." number three again what 1994 song by the beastie boys begins with the line i can't stand it I know you planned it. I'm going to set it straight this Watergate. I don't know. I, possibly tonight's. I don't. I, I can't think of a title for tonight's game. Other than refreshing. <laughs> uh, number four. Chain. Slip. Single. Half double and double are the five basic types of stitches used in what method of clothing creation? Similar to knitting. For again, chain, slip, single, half double, and double are the five basic types of stitches used in what method of clothing creation? Similar to knitting. Chat likes the name refreshing for this, for this episode. Look back. We're pretty good at naming episodes. If you look back at our, our history, you're like, I watched that one. You know, I remember that. Number five. T. 
Titian. Or, yeah, that's got to be Titian. Giotto, Carvaggio, and Michelangelo. I'm going to apologize to my mother-in-law right now. Sorry, Shirley. Are all artists whose work primarily took place during what European era of cultural rebirth? Hey. Adam from Beastie Boys birthday would have been today. That's awesome. Cool. That's a nice little... That's a, I, uh, uh, I will be honest, I did not purposely know that. Just sometimes there's little happy coincidences, you know? I on accident know that. Yeah, I, I'm learning this now, so that's kind of cool. Like, we did our Avatar The Last Airbender quiz on the anniversary of the finale. series finale. Yeah. And we didn't know that or plan that either, so... Sometimes we stumble ass backwards into success. Not success. Fun things. Here's number six. Or oh, again, number five. Titian, Giotto, Carvaggio, and Michelangelo. I know I got half of those right, Shirley. I'm so sorry. Are all artists whose work primarily took place during what European era of cultural rebirth? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is the correct answer. Here's number seven. <laughs> Giotto. Giotto. <laughs> Frog skin, fleck tarn, woodland, tiger stripe, and digital are all types of what military technology? Oh, Titian is Titian? But I didn't say Titty Ann, okay? I didn't say Titty Ann. Titian is better, is closer to Titian. Thank you, chat. Number six again. Frog skin, fleck tarn, woodland, tiger stripe, and digital are all types of what military technology? People very nice tonight. Here's number seven. Hey, Jason. What's up, you? I like seeing Jack. I like seeing uh, um, hyenas just pop out of nowhere. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jason. Uh, here's seven. <laughs> Probably coincidentally, 666 is the sum of all the numbers on the primary mechanism of what casino game? Seven again, pro probably coincidentally, probably. 666 is the sum of all the numbers on the primary mechanism of what casino game? All right, all right. Those are your seven questions uh, that make up most of round five. Look at the answers you know you have correct, all right? Focus on the ones you know you have right. Ignore the guesses, ignore the stats in the dark. Taking a look at the ones you've got right, try and figure out the theme because question number eight is what is the theme for this round? Take a look at it. Take a guess. Once you maybe figure out the theme, double back to the harder questions because now you have an additional hint. Uh, while we keep this on the screen for five seconds, actually, it's only less than that, we're going to check in with Jack and the Heckle Cam. You guys are very generous tonight. Uh, helping us support the show, keep the lights on, uh, keep our writer paid, um, keep our cat fed. Uh, we appreciate you guys. And if, if you're not sending in heckles, you being here and enjoying the show and surviving this refreshing night, uh, um, we appreciate it so much. And heck, we might even get a dollar from all the ads you guys had to watch today. So thank you so much. We're sorry. We don't like to have ads for live shows. That being said, uh, here are... The Heckles and Jack and the Heckle Cam. Hi, Jack. Hi, everybody. I'm having fun. Are you? I bet you are. This is a hefty heckle that comes from Veronica. Thanks, Veronica. Veronica wants to say, big shout out to my colleague, Terry. She created a 100% free college algebra textbook for her students. Everyone using the book will save $200 at 60 students per semester, three semesters per academic year. That's $36,000 in annual savings. Go Terry. Party hat emoji, nerd face emoji. That wasn't even a plug for the book. That's just bragging that someone's fighting the system. Nice job, Terry. Well done. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the college textbook racket is a joke. And uh, that's just that's just good people out there. That's just good people. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I love hearing that. Teachers supporting their students. Wish you the best. Thank you so much, Terry and Veronica. Thank you so much. Next heckle, you guys are great. You're good people. Thank you so much. Uh, this is also a hefty heckle, and it comes from Sue. Sue says, shout hey, Sue. out to Skylar on his 31st birthday. 
We are finally in person with our familia for the first time. Oh. Thanks to Austin and Jack for making our lives less stressful and much more fun. Rosebud Motel forever. Ugh. Party popper, hands up, grid, sunglasses, wine, party emoji, red balloon emoji. Like, I have, like, a hot and cold reaction. Like, oh, my God, you're all together. It's a big deal. And then immediately I'm like, oh, this show wasn't great. Like, like, like there was, like, technical issues uh. that, like, made me feel. But I, you guys are, you do you did this at the end. You guys are very nice. I know that I care more than most of you out there so about the technical stuff. But you guys are very great. Thank you so much. I'm happy you guys are together. I'm happy it's, uh, hopefully it's safe to do so. Uh, and Jersey's getting hit by some stuff lately, so bless your hearts for sticking through it and enjoying trivia while, like, you know, just weather is punishing your part of the country. So we love, we love Jersey. We can't wait to get to Jersey. I, I cannot wait to go to Jersey. I've never, I've never thought, I never thought in a million years I'd have that thought, but I, I, I can't wait. So yeah, exciting stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you as always for Cheers. all your support, everyone. Uh, this Next heckle I have coming in also a hefty heckle. Thank you so much, you guys. Comes from Michael. Thanks, Mike. Michael says, from Mike and Barb in Chicago, parents of a regular but unarmed player. These categories are making us feel way dumb. My fault. Guessing we are older than most players. I need 50s baseball. 50s? 60s football and TV and 60s <laughs> or 70s classic rock. Go Boomer Power! All right, we, we you know we'll look into a Boomer quiz. How about that? How about that? How about that, Michael? We will look into a Boomer quiz. I mean, all right. I need it down. Look. We're we're writing it down. We're even using a pencil. That's pretty Boomer, right? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, we appreciate it, Mike. You guys are great. Uh, Matt's just mad because he's related. <laughs> uh, you want like '50s football? I would. I mean, there we have sports fans in here, but like, if I put up someone with a leather helmet, <laughs> '50s '50s football. I love it. I love it. We did have okay last week. We did have classic Hollywood stars. So yeah, hey, come on, boomers. Watch uh, yeah, yesterday's episode and go to the picture round. Come like, on. Yeah, I got it. Bye, Heckle Cam. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Let's go on to the answers to round five. What kind of 1980s nylon fad trousers, largely made popular by the company Bugle Boy, and rose around the culture of breakdancing? Parachute pants. Parachute. Number one. Number two. Jesus, John. Uh, released by the Emily Post Institute, the 19th edition of what book contains tips for how to share an Airbnb with roommates, how to politely text, how to unfriend someone on Facebook, etiquette. We're looking for etiquette is the name, is the 19th edition of that book. Number three, what 1994 song by the Beastie Boys begins with the line, I can't stand it. I know you planned it. I'm going to set it straight, this Watergate. Uh, we're looking at sabotage is the answer number three. Sabotage four. Chain, slip, single, half, double, and double. The five basic types of stitches used in what method of clothing recreation? Similar to knitting, crocheting is the correct answer there. Or crotcheting. Uh... <laughs> No. You want to crotch at me a sweater? No. No? My grandma made it. She crotcheted it herself. No, not your grandma's crotchet. <laughs> Tishan. Giotto. Giotto. Uh, Caravaggio <laughs> and Michelangelo are all artists whose work primarily took place during what European era of cultural rebirth? The Renaissance is number five. Renaissance for five. Six. Frog skin, flectern, woodland, tiger stripe, and digital. All types of what military technology? Camouflage. Camouflage is number six. Seven. Probably coincidentally, wink, 666 is the sum of all the numbers of the primary mechanism what casino game? Roulette is the right answer to number seven. Number eight. What's the theme for the round in these answers? We had parachute, etiquette, sabotage, crochet, renaissance, camouflage, roulette, parachute, etiquette, sabotage, crochet, renaissance, I can't do it. <laughs> French words! French words. What's... Okay, oh, see, share something about sabotage? Yeah, sabotage. What do you got? Sab sabot is a wooden shoe, a clog. Right. And sabotage comes from when the workers would throw their shoes in the machinery and ruin it. And they want to strike, so they didn't want to work, so they throw their sabo, sabotage, into the machinery. Sabotage comes from the word shoe failure. Yeah, I love clog. <laughs> clog. 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 Literally a clog <laughs> attack. It's a clog <laughs> attack. Eight out of eight in chat. Please don't ever try a French accent again. Conrad, you're not my parents. 
Uh, round six, folks, the chat, the Chiron's been wrong for so long. What are you doing? Round six is a round that is sure to get me a nice handful of maybe copyright flags, but I don't care. In this round, identify the cartoon by the theme song. Cartoon theme songs is what we're doing. You're going to hear these twice. You're going to hear these theme songs twice. So, by the, sorry, boomers. <laughs> Let me make sure this is going to suck for boomers. Hold on. Incorrect. Incorrect. Boomers are represented. Stick around. I know it's late in Chicago, but stick around. <laughs> Name the cartoon by its TV theme song. Good luck, folks. Here's your first playthrough. After this, you get uh, one more playthrough, and then that's it. Here we go. Number one. Number two. Come join the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister Dot. Just for fun, we run around the Warner movie lot. They lock us in the tower whenever we get caught. But we break loose and then the loose, and now you know the plot. Number three. Number four. Number five. He's a demon on wheel. He's a demon and he's gonna be chasing after someone. He's gaining on you, so you better look alive. He's busy revving up the powerful Mach 5. Number 6. I wanna be the very best, like no one ever was. To catch them is my real test, to train them is my cause. Number 7. I'm one tough kazookas, what hates all kazookas, what ain't on the up and square. I dip some and bump some, and always I'll rub some, and none of them gets nowhere. Number eight. How'd you do, folks? We're gonna play it one more time. One more time. Name the TV cartoon by its theme song. One more time. You get it? one more playthrough. Here it is. Good luck. Number one. Number two. Come join the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister Dot. Just for fun, we run around the Warner movie lot. They lock us in the tower whenever we get caught. But we break loose and then the loose, and now you know the plot. Number three. Number four. Number five. He's a demon on wheel. He's a demon and he's gonna be chasing after someone. He's gaining on you, so you better look alive. He's busy revving up the powerful Mach 5! Number 6 I wanna be the very best Like no one ever was To catch them is my real test To train them is my cause 
number seven. I want a kazookas, what hates all palookas, what ain't on the up and square. I dip some and bump some, and always I rub some, and none of them gets nowhere. Number eight. Alright, that's it. That's the last playthrough that you get for those eight clips in this round. Sorry, I should have had this up, huh? <laughs> I forgot I made that title card. That was what you were supposed to do. That would have been more informational than just round six. But, here is Jack and the Heckle Cam. To <laughs> Why is Buxom being said in chat? Uh, we will go to the Heckle Cam. We're going to read the final heckles. It's the last chance for you to send in messages in uh, the hopes of getting read on stream tonight. So here we go with Jack and the Heckleham. Hello, Jack. Hello, hecklers and all the people playing. Uh, this I have is a generous heckle from Chandler. Thank you, Chandler. Thank you so much, Chandler. Uh, Chandler says, I know it's already been stated, but happy birthday, Skylar. Yeah, I don't think I made a big enough deal about that. Skylar, happy 31st birthday. True. Yeah. True. Hi, everybody, what? Ready? Wish happy birthday to Skylar and Chad. Skylar, that's a big deal. Thirty-one. I mean, that's. I mean, you can rent a car now. Thirty fun. <laughs> yeah, thirty fun. <laughs> Truth. How old are you? I'm thirty fun. <laughs> for, okay, for a whole year, Skylar, you have to tell people. All right, if they ask how old you are, doctor's office. Uh, I don't care where. Uh, that's the only example I'm giving. <laughs> I'm, I'm thirty fun years old. <laughs> that's my gift to you. A punishment that you must do all year. <laughs> I'm also 30 fun, so that's great. Uh, uh, happy birthday, Skylar, my favorite brother. Glad to spend tonight with all my favorite people. That includes you, Austin, and Jack. Truth. Rosebud Motel spreading all the love. Love floaty face emoji. A party popper emoji. Wine emoji. Love it. Love it. Chandler, thank you for the, 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 the artful and appropriate nudge that it is Skylar's birthday today. Darn it. And happy birthday. Congratulations on being 30 fun. I will not let that go. Next heckle. <laughs> uh, our next heckle comes from Cassie. Cassie wants to say happy birthday to my spirit animal, Bree. We love hey, hey. you. And squirrel. Exo, rainbow, beer, porn, money. I guess the parents are out of town. Yeah, hey, I guess they're not playing on Wednesdays, huh? And we have a couple. Of, yeah, that's right. We do have a couple of birthdays. Bree and Skylar. And that's... happy birthday, Bree. We love it. We love it. We can't. We can't believe. Well, I mean, we we actually can believe it because what are you gonna? You're not gonna go out to like a bar right now, right? So you know, I can believe that you're spending your time with us tonight, and we appreciate uh, that. Uh, I would be a Sky Skyler if I said I could breathe it. No. I'm, what was? I'm what no, was I was that? doing Skyler and Bree, and it didn't work, and I'm drunk. Hey, that I can understand that. I get that. Let's go on the answers. <laughs> There she goes. Bye, Heckle Cam. I'm going to come back to that. She's going to be still there. I'm going to cut back an hour later. Answers to round six. The Simpsons is number one. The Sim easier round. It was an easier round. Tougher, for tougher front half, easier back half. Uh, number two, we're looking at Animaniacs. They have pay or play contracts. There's also baloney in their slacks. Uh, three, Futurama. Right answer, number three, Futurama. Number four, Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. Uh, courtesy of Fred's two feet is by is that lyric that you keep mishearing. Courtesy of Fred's two feet. Number five, Speed Racer is the toughest one in the round. Speed Racer was five. That was a rough one. Speed Racer for five. Number six, Pokemon. Got to be the very best. Pokemon. Seven, Popeye. Popeye the Sailor Man is number seven. And finally, number eight, we're looking at King of the Hill is the right answer there. Yes, King of the Hill is number eight. How did you do? In round number six, our final round tonight, we're out. We're done. We did it. We made it through. Thank you so much for sticking with this entire game tonight. Refreshing everything. Uh, just generally being nice and helping us out throughout this entire stream. There's two things that we do at the end of every quiz. Two things we do at the end of every quiz. One, show if I'm wearing pants tonight. Nope. Not going to happen. Not wearing. I wear shorts because it is hot as heck. Jack, she's right there. Um... Second thing we do is we show shadow on the shadow cam. Let's bring up the shadow cam right now. I think
think we have it up, right? All right, here you go. And let's see if we have it. We're gonna find. We're gonna get our cat of shadow. She's 13 years old. She's a Russian blue. She's having none of it. Nope. Nothing yet. Nothing yet. That's okay. I mean, if you want to say goodbye, I understand that now, folks. I get that. Oh, I there we go. Hello, here's Shadow. Oh, there's Shadow in the Shadow Cam. She's a loaf right now. She's loafing. That's all. She's she's 13 years old. Big blink because she loves you. That's a big blink. Big blink from the loaf. Shadow, your support helps us keep this little monster fed. Look at that face. Look at her disco face. She's got a bunch of crazy lights going on. Uh, she's cat loafing hard right now. Friends, family, people. Uh, your, your support helps to keep her fed. Again, she's to her name having, or or to her uh, history having none of this. So we're gonna say goodbye to Shadow in the Shadow Cam. We're gonna let her go back to sleep. Bye, Shadow. Bye. Oh, what a pretty kitty. All right, folks, friends, family. We hope you had fun tonight. We thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we'll we will be back tomorrow for another edition of Trivia Night Online, brought to you by the People's Trivia Company. Uh, your scores will be posted tomorrow on our social media. That's Facebook and Instagram. Please tell your friends and family if you had a good time tonight. Join them. Uh, have them join your team. Have them get onto your team and uh, have fun with them. That's the whole point. So let's say goodbye tonight. Uh, on behalf of myself, Austin, I don't know why I point. I put the arrows there for a reason. On behalf of Jack, Me. my co-host, my co-producer, and my wife, we really hope you had a good time tonight. Jack, any parting words? I love y'all. Can't wait to Tuesday till we get a uh, late night on you. What? We're going to get so late night. This, oh, the start time is going to be uh, 7.15. Mm -hmm. You know, we usually start at 7. We're going to start at 7.15 on Tuesday. Tomorrow, regular start time, but it's after dark, so it's later. It's special. I know, usually. But take care, everyone. Goodbye. Uh, we have a good time tonight. Take care. On behalf of uh, myself, Jack, the hosts, people, and players that make up the People's Trivia Company. And Shadow. And Shadow uh, is an animal. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. We love you. Love Goodbye. You. Cheers. Thank you. Have fun.